Hello everybody, welcome into Rock Painting 101. I am feeling a little chilly. It's been getting colder where I'm at as it is across I think most of the country. And so something that cold weather makes me think of is flannels. So today um, we are going to be creating flannel rocks. And I just realized I don't have anything down on my surface here. I always like to have something under my rocks, so I, I do have paint on my table anyways, but there we go. Something just to, just a little bit of protection. So we are going to do two rocks at the same time. Oh, I didn't get my green out. I was going to do a, a green flannel style and a red flannel style. So get some green out over here. Um, since I'm using regular acrylics, I'm going to kind of work back and forth here. I might speed up certain sections of this video. I need a second dab of dark over here. Um, just in case um, I do need some extra dry time. So we're just going to jump right in. The first thing we're going to do, whatever your base base coat is going to be for your um, flannel coloring. Um, just want to do a coat of that on your rock. So we'll get that down first. So I'm gonna do red over here. And these rocks are, have nothing on them. I'm just going right on the rock here. I'm probably gonna do two coats of each for my base coat, so it's nice and thick. And it'll help that color be nice and bright. There's one. And I've got another bigger brush here. green. See, in some colors, when you're going right on the rock, some colors will kind of soak in that first layer. So, like I said, I will do a little bit of editing on this video so you're not sitting here and watching my rocks dry. There we go. I'm definitely going to need another coat over there now, aren't I? So we'll let that kind of dry. Let these first two coats dry. Be right back. All right, those have had, had a second here to dry. We're gonna go right back at them. Same color. Biggest thing is if you're not waiting a really long time, use a nice light brush stroke. Some people wanna press really hard. Pressing hard does not make paint stick. If anything, it pulls it back up off your rock. So nice light touch, okay? I did actually end up grabbing a blue. I'm gonna do a third rock here. I figure why not? I'm gonna have some dry time, so if I do multiples, it will kind of give me a way to kind of ping pong around. So I got an icy blue and like a dark blue instead of black for that one. See, look how much brighter that green is. Okay, our base coats are good and dry, so I'm gonna go ahead and start adding on some of my flannel design. Now the thing is, I'm gonna do a very basic, you can get more and more intricate the more um, you get comfortable with this process, uh, but I'm just gonna do a very basic um, plaid design. So I'm gonna move my other two rocks here out of the way. We're gonna start here on our red. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna pull some dark into your red for your first um, layer of colors. And I've got a square, this is a square tip, it's kinda of got an angle. Um, I use a lot of my mom's old paint brushes. I think she, this actually does say angular shader on it. Um, and then I've also got just a smaller square tip that I'm gonna use to clean up my edges. But I'm gonna start with a, a wider one. I'm gonna use the back end and start to kind of pull in a little bit of my black into a little bit of my red here. And we're just gonna make a nice dark shade of red. I don't want it to get too muddy, so. So I pull a little bit more and a little bit more red in here because I still want to have that red coloring to it, like so. And once you're happy with the shade you've got, kind of dab off the extra there. I'm just gonna wipe this on my paint rag. And then we're gonna go in. Now I've got a piece of cardstock here. Um, cardstock is a bit thicker than like printer paper. Um, the reason I choose to use cardstock to do this is printer paper will absorb a lot of your paint um, and it might bleed through faster. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my cardstock and kind of use it as my as my guideline here. I'm gonna dab a little bit of paint here and I'm actually gonna make sure I've got a nice clean tip 
So dab it in your paint and kind of stroke it on the side of your palette a little bit. You don't want to have globs of paint on there. There we go. And I'm going to place, I'm going to do my long one last. So I'm going to place it right here on my rock. And see, since it's cardstock, you can kind of press it down. And it's more of just a guideline, okay? You're not going to, with this process, you could probably use tape to get a better line. I'm just going to get a nice thick coat, and I'm just going to follow that line. I'm not actually pressing up against it. So my phone just ran out of battery in the middle of that stroke, you guys. So I'm back, not battery, space, sorry. So I didn't have to charge it. So I'm back. So I just up and then back down. And once you've got it on there, you've got your line, you can kind of come to your edge here. And just make sure that your uh, stripe goes all the way to the side there. Like that. Now I'll do that whole thing again and hopefully not be so rudely interrupted. Now I move along my piece of paper. So this is where I did my first one. I'm gonna move up my paper a little bit because I don't want to accidentally see on the back side a little bit might seep under. You don't want to get that on your rock. So I'm just going to space it apart as much or as little as you want. You can kind of make your plaid shape however you want and try to make your line here line up with your line here. Now, see, that's going to be pretty close because I have a pretty th thick stroke. That's about where I want my line to be. So we're going to move down just a little bit more about there. And again, into your paint, get it into your bristles and then wipe it so that you get a nice smooth we don't want any globs on there like so and I'm going to start at the top and again I'm I'm just using this as my line I'm not trying to actually paint on my paper if I get a little paint on there it's not a big deal two down see and then I can just come back in here with my color with this brush or if you want to use a smaller one you just get that all the way to the edge like so and then I'm gonna get one more is gonna probably start right here now it's gonna go off the edge so I don't need to worry about this on this side I'm gonna have to try to kind of freehand this one just a bit. So I want my gap to be about the same. And we're just gonna place, and it's gonna go off the edge here. It's about maybe there, right in frame, guys. Move up a little for you. There we go. And the biggest thing, that's why I'm editing this video, is to take your time. Okay, really take your time. Now I'm gonna let that, see now, now I can see my gap. It's not quite as close. The biggest challenge of trying to do these is to get your lines, the distance of them apart. There, that's a little bit better. Try to get as straight a lines as you can. Obviously the more of them you do, the better you'll get. You know, pick up little, techniques and things to help you out. There we go, and I'm gonna, now that ended up being pretty thick over there, so I'm gonna go ahead and thicken up this one on this side now a little bit. Like that, there we go. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my cross lines here on this. I'm just gonna do one thick one down the middle here of this shade the darker red and then we can go over our other colors I'm gonna off center it just a smidge to me if you're not sure if you're gonna get the center I like to go off center enough that it looks like it was on purpose right so we're just gonna off center it down to the bottom here and again I'm just gonna go right along that paper Like so, just like that. Now I can use my brush here. And we'll get the other 
this side nice and crisp here. Just like that. And we can go over our previous lines a little bit here. I know you guys see me do a lot of uh, my paint pens on this channel, like lots of times. This is part of one of my main reasons why is look at all this paint on my palette. I'm gonna have to do a handful of these rocks to use it all up. I tend to waste, I always get too much. I can always get more, but I always get too much. All right, so we've got these down and I touched up my other lines. Okay, we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna let these dry, and I will do the same thing on this rock with, I'm just gonna mix uh, darker blue in with the light blue and get this one started as well, and then we'll check back. All right, we're coming along here. Uh, these are getting pretty dry. This one I've been working on, but you know what, I'm gonna, I'll finish it up and show it all off at the end. I'm trying to do three at the same time um, and record is getting me confused with my colors and shapes. Okay, so what we want to do next is do our final um, color. And I'm gonna use an even smaller brush for my lines and then we will fill in. So on my rock here, I'm going to do um, some black lines and then where your plaid overlaps will be darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my small lines first. So I'm just gonna take, this is kind of almost like a liner brush, right in my black, and I'm gonna kind of twirl it off there so that I get a nice point. And then I'm going to do a single line on either side of my thicker plaid. Now, if you have a hard time doing this with a brush, you could use a pen if you have paint pens. Uh, my hand is not super duper steady. Oh, as much paint as I thought on there. So the main thing is to try to keep an even pressure and consistency. Don't get carried away. You don't want to have too much paint. If you have too much paint on there, it will kind of spread and glob out to the side. It's better to go at it a couple little bits at a time. Like so. And then we're gonna do one on the opposite side here. And just try to keep it parallel to the, the line next to you. So you're working right next to a line, just try to stay as even as possible next to that line. And I'm gonna do on the opposite side of this one as well. And see, it's hard for me to see what I'm doing like that. So I'm gonna turn my rock around so that I'm working off to the right-hand side of it. This is, believe it or not, my very first one. I'm doing it with you guys so you can kind of learn alongside. Okay, and then we're gonna have the stripe on either side of this as well. And you do want it to cross over even though it doesn't come out on the other side. Now something you can look at too to help with your lines here is when you're crossing your black lines, they should create right angles. Okay, be careful not to put your finger where you've painted. We've got the other one over here. Oops, I pressed a little harder there. When you press harder, your line's gonna get a little bit thicker. go just like that now if you want to pretend like I feel like there would be another dark red line over here so I'm gonna actually add one more black line here along the top because I believe just over that edge is that next dark line Just like that. 
Okay, now, last but not least, I'm gonna rinse this brush off so it doesn't get dried on there. Last but not least, we have to do our overlapping spots. I'm gonna get back out. I've got a nice square-edged brush here. Am I in screen? Yep, square-edged brush here. Now, where your dark red and your dark red overlap, right here, would be darker in a plaid world, right? So, I'm just gonna go in with my black. I'm gonna pull it very thin here because I do not want any paint hanging over the edge of my brush because that will cause me to not get a nice square edge. And I'm just gonna do this one over here off to this side first. Make sure you get a place you can hold your rock without messing up your paint. You don't wanna... And we're gonna go right to that far corner and get our corner first, okay? This far corner, corner, there we go. I'm not using a lot of paint, just because I, I wanna make sure that I get it in the right spot. And I'm gonna pull it. Okay, so once you've got that corner, can you see that? Here, let me pull it up here real quick. So once you've got that corner, a nice edge, then you can work to your next corner. Now this one's kind of on the edge of my rock here. So I'm gonna add the fudge where that corner would be, right? Too much paint there. See, if you get too much paint, you can possibly it kind of will almost bubble over the edge. So you want to be very careful. And I can't, I can't do this holding it with pie. So I'll show it to you once I get this other stroke on here. Just like this. Okay. There we go. Oop, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'll do this one right in the center so it's easy for you to see. So again, very thin on the paint. Nice crisp edge on your brush here. So you got that nice crisp corner. You don't have a big glob, any globs of paint coming over. You're gonna go right in to where the corner would be and place your brush in and then pull into the center of your square, really, is what you're doing, okay? Don't try to create all four edges at once. You just want these corners nice and crisp, and then you can create the line in between them. Okay, so I'll turn my rock. I find pulling in the same direction tends to help me do a better job. Now I'm gonna do this corner this way, and this one here, like that. And we'll turn it again. Again, nice smooth edge. Because these sharp corners on the overlap is really what's going to give it that very plaid look. So it's worth taking your time here on this part. I mean, all of it, obviously you wanna take your time, but these are really looking make or break the look of your rock. There we go. So once you've got your four corners, then you can kind of go and add a little bit more paint to your brush and uh, make sure you get a nice fill on it like that okay i'm gonna do i've got one more here and i'm gonna work on um my other rocks and i will show them all off to you here in just a minute so i'm gonna get really in deep here and finish these up i'll be back okay well i finished up 
the one I was working on. Here's our basic simple plaid design. Now, after you do them for a little bit, you can kind of add to your design. I never quite got the light green to pop on here, so I went ahead and added in some red. I did where the reds overlapped, made sure to add a little bit of the darker color as well. So you can definitely play around with your plaid design. Here's the blue one. And of course, the more you do, the better your lining is going to get. But these are just three basic, simple plaid designs for you to do as a beginner. So I hope you give this a try. Um, you could add words on top, you know, um, baby it's cold outside maybe, or something along those lines. Or you can just hide them or use them for decor just like this. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thanks for sharing, thanks for watching, thanks for all the hearts and likes as well. We'll see you all soon. Make sure to follow Rock Painting 101 for more tutorials. Bye-bye.